Om Namashwaya students. Today we are going to start with Legal Studies Class 11 Unit 1 Theory and Nature of Political Institutions Chapter 3 Part 4 Separation of Powers. In the previous session we had a discussion about the key features of the doctrine of separation of power and defects inherent in it. In this session we will have a discussion about separation of powers in practice, separation of power in Britain, separation of power in USA, separation of powers in practice. Depending on the forms of the government in a state, there is a overlapping of powers among the organs. This can be better explained by studying the functions performed by different organs in the state. Let us first start with the separation of powers in Britain. In Britain, the three organs of the government are the executive head, the British monarch, currently Queen Elizabeth II, legislature comprised of House of Commons and House of Lords and the judiciary. The British Queen acts as a nominal executive head devoid of political powers. She holds the office by virtue of hereditary succession. The real executive powers vest with the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers. The Queen exercises powers on the advice of the Council of Ministers. Prime Minister and his Council of Ministers are part of the legislature. They are collectively responsible to it and play important role in the legislative activities. They remain in office so long as they enjoyed the confidence of House of the Commons. They make subordinate legislations. They perform judicial functions by being the members of the administrative boards and tribunals. The House of the Commons performs judicial functions in case of breach of its own privileges. So, this is about the separation of powers in different organs of the government in Britain and their effectiveness. The law lords who were the final arbiters of judicial disputes in Britain sat simultaneously in the house of lords. The upper law, upper house of the legislature Although this arrangement ceased in October 2009, when the Supreme Court of United Kingdom came into existence. Now the Constitutional Reform Act 2005, the Lord Chancellor was the head of the judiciary in Britain. He fused the legislature, executive and judiciary as he was the ex officio speaker of the house of the lords. A government minister who sat in the cabinet and was head of the lord chancellor's department which administered the courts, the justice system and appointed judges. He sat as a judge on the judicial committee of the house of the lords the highest domestic court in the entire United Kingdom and the judicial committee of the Privy Council, the senior tribunal court for parts of the Commonwealth. The Constitutional Reform Act 2005 separated the powers with legislative function, wasted with an elected Lord Speaker and the judicial functions vested with the Lord Chief Justice. 
the lord chancellor's department was replaced with a ministry of justice and the lord chancellor currently serves in the position of secretary of state for justice the british governing system follows a parliamentary form of government the british constitutional system has adopted a fusion of powers rather than separation of powers of the different organs of the government so what we have understood is about the government of britain that there exist the parliamentary form of government which talks about the inseparable uh, powers of the legislature and the executive organ of the government and we are talking about the constitutional monarchy in britain now separation of powers in united states of america if we talk about the us constitution has adopted presidential form of government so the three organs of the government are the president as the executive organ the supreme court of america and the subordinate court as the judicial organ and the congress as the legislative organ with two houses senate and the house of the representatives you can see over here the constitution the flowchart representation of the government of us is uh, represented over here the constitution legislative branch executive branch and the judicial branch and this is the hierarchy maintained over there department of agriculture department of commerce department of defense and department of interior department of justice and department of labor this is the area of authority for the legislative branch for the executive branch department of education department of state for the judicial branch department of energy department of health and human services department of housing and urban de uh, de development department of transportation department of department of uh, treasury as well as department of veterans affairs this is the independent establishments and government corporations so what we have understood till here is depending upon the form of the government existing in a state the organs of the government and their interdependence and their separation depends in britain we have found the theory of separation of power is intended to be the judiciary uh, the judiciary is intended to be free and executive and legislature is interdependent on each other if we talk about the separation of power in usa there the presidential form of government exists where all the three organs of the government are independent of their authorities now the separation of powers finds its best expression in the united states of america this is what our study suggests in the presidential form of government the best separation of power is found the american constitution did not explicitly state that powers ought to be separate it simply distributed the powers the legislative powers are vested in the congress the executive powers in the president and the judicial power in the court while apportioning the lion's share of powers to one organ of the government the constitution gave smaller slices to each of other organs this was done to avoid concentration and consequent abuse of power the fathers of the constitution considered that power should be limited controlled and diffused the law making power was vested in the congress but the president received his share of power to recommend measures to summon congress in special session and to veto bills passed by the congress similarly the senate shared with the president his powers to make appointments declare war and ratify treaties 
the congress acts in a judicial capacity in cases of impeachment of president and supreme court judges so this is about the separation of power and its identity as explicit to the government the presidential form of government in usa the president is elected by the people and the congress is also elected by the people neither the president is responsible to the congress nor the congress is responsible to the president however the judges of the supreme court are nominated by the president their appointments have to be ratified by the senate in certain circumstances the senate may refuse to ratify the choices made by the president the congress cannot be dissolved by the president the president remains in power for 4 years the members of the senate sit for 6 years and those of the house of the representatives for 2 years the president has been given the powers of making appointments but these have to be ratified by the senate the supreme court has the power of the judicial review the court has the power to examine the law passed by the congress and the executive orders issued by the president and declare null and void if it contravenes the provisions of the us constitution so what we have understood till this is in the presidential system of government that exists in usa the implementation of separation of power between the first two organs of the government that is the executive and the legislature is practiced well finds finds expression the judiciary interferes and checks over the legislative and the executive as the organ of government but the separation of the powers between the between the legislature and executive in their area of authority is perfectly maintained now the president can declare war but he can do so only if he has got the approval of both the houses of the congress the president could intervene in the business of the court through his power of pardon for all offenses except treason the us president appoints the members of the cabinet with the approval of the congress the executive head of the departments the president and the secretaries are not members of the congress the president has the power to call special sessions of the congress and veto the bills except money bills passed by the congress where the congress exercises power the us congress delegates law making power to the executive after laying down the legislative policy and principle now in the next session in unit 1 chapter 3 part 5 separation of powers we will continue with the chapter om namah shivaya